Who's the greatest emperor of all time? It's been debated. Many will say it's the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Hongdi. What? Never heard of him? Well, I bet you've heard of one of his accomplishments. How about the Great Wall of China? Have I got your attention now? Qin became king at age 13. That's probably around your age. He spent the next 22 years using military might, spies, bribery, and alliances to conquer the remaining rival states. Once he had unified all the states, he declared himself the first emperor of China. Now Qin was a legalist and believed in strict laws, harsh punishments, and a strong central authority. He divided his territory into 36 districts. Three officials governed each district. One for the army, one for the laws, and one to report what was going on to the emperor. Chen was a tough guy, and a little wacko. When he discovered plots against his life, he killed the traitor and their families. He even exiled his own mother from court when he thought she was plotting against him. So how did Chen make the all-time list? He did some great things for China. First of all, he unified the country under one ruler. Secondly, he put in place a unified system of laws that applied to the rich and the poor. These laws were based on his legalist beliefs and were strict, detailed, and carried specific punishments with them. Next, to help with trade throughout his empire, he standardized money, making metal coins with holes in them the only currency accepted throughout the empire. Looks funny, huh? But it was actually very practical as people could thread the coins onto a cord to carry them around. In addition to money, he also standardized weights. He had metal workers create bell-shaped weights in a variety of standard sizes. The third thing he standardized was measures. He had specifically sized measuring cups made throughout his empire to standardize the measurements of trade. Hey all you students, here's another good thing he did for China. He simplified their writing system down to only 9,000 approved characters. Kind of makes you thankful for our 26 letters, doesn't it? The last thing that we're going to put on Qin's good list is that he built the Great Wall of China. Well, he didn't really build the Great Wall, but he connected several already existing walls. This finished wall provided great protection from invading armies from the north. Ooh, I almost forgot a big one. Notice how Qin kind of sounds like Qin, which kind of sounds like China? Heck, they named the whole country after this guy. So far, Qin sounds like a shoe in for the greatest emperor ever, but he was a harsh ruler. He executed hundreds of Confucius scholars for disagreeing with them. He burned Confucius books and sent thousands of peasants and political exiles to work on the Great Wall. No one was safe from the wrath of Qin. When his son questioned his harsh laws and paranoia, Qin sent him to work on the Great Wall of China. Something you should know about Qin is that he was afraid to die. As his years went on, he became more and more paranoid that people were out to kill him. Which, let's face it, they probably were. Rumor has it that he never slept in the same bed twice. He spent much of his time searching for immortality, talking to magicians, trying magic potions. He wanted to live forever. He also began work on a gigantic tomb for himself. Over 700,000 workers worked on the tomb. It is rumored to have rivers of mercury and treasures beyond belief. The tomb was rediscovered in 1974 and is still under excavation, but one of the most amazing finds was the army of terracotta warriors. Over 6,000 unique individual clay figures guarding the tomb of China's first emperor. Good? Bad? It's kind of your call. What we do know about Qin is that in just over 10 years of ruling, he changed China forever. So, there you have it. Was Qin Shi Hongdi the greatest emperor ever? Or the worst? Was he awesome for China? Or were his legalist beliefs too harsh? Did his good outweigh his psycho behavior? I don't know. What do you think?